Hey. Hey, how y'all doing? We're back with more. Alan Wake. We're running from the cops. Whoop. We're doing a bad job of running from the cops. Whoop. Can't hit me, I'm behind a tree. Whoop. All right, yeah, so this this sucks. This section is probably the worst part of the game. Hey, Tia Call, how you doing? Appreciate you being here. Hope you're having a great day. It's basically force stealth, and we all know force stealth is just garbage. I think I'm supposed to technically... Yeah, I'm supposed to go this way. The other way is like instant death. So basically, we're just trying to avoid... Ah, what? I, I'm sorry, what? The kidnapper. And I'll say, hey, Radical Eddie, how you doing? Appreciate you being here. Hope you're having a fantastic day as well. I died magically just now. I completely forgot all of the uh, controls. So I guess I can't, like, break off from the, uh, path. I'm just supposed to run up the path, or I'll get killed instantly. There he is. We have the suspect in sight. No, you don't. Oh, damn. Not a flare. Ah! Took a big hit there. Okay. Like, this is not exciting at all. I gotta be honest. Like, this is an extremely boring sequence. Oh, well, you know, everybody deserves a day or two to relax and recharge. Especially after the way things are. Uh, as they are now. So, glad that you've chosen to take your time uh, and uh, join us. I'm sorry that you had to join us on uh, the worst part of the game. For decades, the darkness that wore Barbara Jagger's skin slept fitfully in the dark place that was its home and prison. It was hungry and in pain. It dreamed of its nights of glory when the poet's writing had called it from the depths and given it a brief, terrible taste of power and freedom. The rock stars had stirred it from the deep sleep the poet had sunk it back to in the end. When it sensed the rider on the ferry, it opened its eyes. So we got our first page from this chapter. And our health is all healed up, so that's good. The darkness abhors the police just as much as we do. All right, well, there's no body. So there's probably something... Oh, I think that's a page. Rose didn't know how the strange old lady got in her trailer. And she looked wrong somehow. The woman showed her teeth in an approximation of a smile and traced a finger down Rose's cheek. Pretty girl, she said. Rose felt as if she was falling asleep. But her knees didn't buckle. The crone spoke in a whisper. Her words ice cold and dark in Rose's ear. Oh yeah, there's there's plenty of good uh, pieces through the throughout this game. It's just 
the whole running from the cops thing and basically being a being able to be one shotted and a bunch of like other nonsense. It's just a very bad section. All right. So it looks like we're out of collectibles for this particular spot. So it's time to head up the stairs to the checkpoint. It's definitely not as bad as I remember it being. That's because I guess I'm not a dumb kid. Oop. Shooting up flares, huh? That won't help you. Oh shit. Okay. They are completely fucked down there. Down they go. Fuck the police. This horror was everywhere I went, circling me. The cops didn't stand a chance. They were after a writer, not a monster. Little did they know that they were coming up against the greatest writer ever. Stefan Kang. Uh, no, okay. We don't have a flashlight was the big problem. Such good conversations. I mean, like, you know, maybe you gave them the rights to your likeness and story, Tia. Very clearly, this, uh, this apes the, uh, autobiography you wrote, uh, some years ago. You know, that time that you went to, uh, Bright Falls and defeated a bunch of, uh, yeah! Outran a helicopter! Uh, there's a rock. I can run to the rock. Oh! Birds! Oh. So they, they're gonna die. Donk. Not even an explosion, they just donk. Oh, there it is. No, helicopters famously just donk into mountainsides. Looks like the crow has vanished. Oh, uh, double check the area, just in case we missed any pages or thermoses. We got a lot of thermoses. That's a lot of hot cocoa. For one writer. So if you listen closely when I use the, uh, sprint feature uh he starts to like pant and wheeze and uh you know when your energy is re restored when he stops panting and wheezing it's pretty quiet so maybe i can get it to do it there we go So maybe there's something up here. Exactly. We didn't ha we didn't do it with a car though. That's the only thing. Zoom. Zoom again. Z zoom out. Zoom. Zoom again. Okay. So it looks like the gas station. There's the wreckage. Anything else I need to be looking for? 
No, it doesn't seem it. Okay. It's a nice ranger station. Oh, hey, oh, thermos. Give me thermos. Thank you. Uh, this is James Mulligan Thornton. Come in. Over. Uh, Thornton here. Uh, James, we got both Wheeler and Rose in custody. <laughs> they didn't put up a fight or anything. Why they were hey, come on, what you come on? Sit down and give me that. James Mulligan here. Over. Uh, go ahead, Mulligan. Over. Uh, we got Wheeler and Rose here. Wheeler's dropped or hopped up on something. Speaking of which, that fed had a pretty distinctive whiff of eau de scotch about him, if you know what I mean. Over. Uh, I don't have anything on that, Deputy Mulligan. Over. Well, whatever. Anyway, Rose is just being plain weird here. You better get Doc in to take a look at both. Over. Gotcha. You better get them here quickly. The, uh... Fed's going to want to interview the Wheeler, over. <laughs> oh, yeah, I bet he does. Looks like they have a lot in common. All looking out. It's a good conversation. Any other goodies up here? All right, doesn't look like any collectibles. There is another... All right, so what do we got? I can see the lights at the radio station in the distance. For some reason, the radio sign wasn't rendering properly. It must have been because my eyes weren't adjusted to 4K yet. That's a good way to do it. Hey, Lord Tyrion, how you doing? Appreciate you being here. Hope you're having a great day. I imagine that the broadcast tower in the distance was part of the local radio station. Maine seemed like a decent guy. Perhaps he could give me directions to the coal mine. Why would anybody want to go into a coal mine willingly? Ah, nice, nice. Which one of the top? Is there one of the topics the of shadows oh. clung to the gate? The darkness that was after me was trying to stop me. I wouldn't get through without it. It's one of the topics uh, about the uh, dangers of uh, violent video games and how they turn us all into mass murderers. Based on totally true facts not made up by morons. Yeah. There we go. It's great when the... Uh, the field is big enough, and you still manage to fuck it up, like I did. Uh, okay. That was a weird particle effect. The old generator conked out. I'd have to see if I could fix it and try again. Hmm. A number cruncher. See, number crunchers are the most dangerous of gamer. Yeah, wow, that particle effect is in the wrong spot. So is that one. Like, all the particle effects are in the wrong spots for this... this. Alright, so I think this is timed. Yeah, because this, this like, wiggled out. This is extremely unsafe, by the way. We fragged it somehow. Sweet. Exactly. And technically, they're not zombies. Technically, by by the standard definition of zombie, they're they're, they're more uh they're possessed human beings. I think would be the correct nomenclature.
if they're still even human beings. I, I trying to remember if they're act the actual people or if they uh if they're just like uh manifestations by the darkness of the supposed people that they've taken over or captured. I know they definitely can possess people. That's my favorite genre, possessed person shooter. Oop. Nope. Uh, flashlight. Give. I have flashlight. We have a weapon. Well, half of a weapon. There we go. Huh. Wibbly bobbly. Alright, well we poofed the uh, darkness out of existence. It took me a moment to recognize the flashbang grenades. They were an ideal weapon for my situation. I kind of feel like a flashbang is pretty easily recognized. I got your report right here. Alright, so we've only got flashbangs and a flashlight, which means that we don't have the ability to permanently kill stuff unless flashbangs will ice them. Oh. Okay. Okay, yeah. Flashbangs will ice them. That's good. But we're going to have to really be careful about how we use these. Because we've only got... F Fuck. Uh, I forgot how to dodge. Ah. Oh, and I goofed that. How do I dodge? Alright, looks like we can pick up some... Uh, more flashies. Oh, duh. Dodge is the same button as run. Forgot about that. And here's another call. You're on KBFFM with Pat Main. Tell us a story, Pat. Peabody, Pat. What's on your mind, Mill? Well, I live near the trailer park, Pat, and there's a big ruckus going on over there. Well, that's just up the road from me, too. Uh, what's going on, do you know? I don't know, but there's a bunch of police cars there, lots of sirens, a helicopter buzzing around, and I think I heard some gunshots. Gunshots? Yes, sir, like from a pistol. So can you find out what's going on? Because it's just next door and they're popping off guns there. They're still shooting? No, it was maybe 10, 15 minutes ago. It sounds serious, Pat. I'm telling you, it don't sound like no party. Well, I'm certainly going to give the station a call, Milt. Okay. You'll hear it here as soon as I hear from them. Okay, thanks. And that was that. So we're on the lookout for pages. We just got to look for little shining spots on the ground. Oh, nope. Oh, come on. I dodged that, you cheater. Ah, there's a page. Oh. Okay. Here. Whoop. I know that was really hard to see. Ah. I don't care about you. I want this. Touched by the dark presence, Rose was lost in a dreamland where everything was drawn in black and gray crayons. The old lady had promised her that all her wishes would come true. She would be Alan Wake's muse. She was smiling so hard it hurt her face. She crushed a bottle full of sleeping pills into the coffee. Deep down inside, she was screaming in terror. I wouldn't say trying for 100%. Just if I 
since I'm going through these areas, I might as well try and get as much as I can. We're not going to be able to get 100% because in order to do so, you have to be playing on the hardest difficulty. Whoop. And I'm not wasting a flashbang on one of these dudes. Okay, I guess I'll just die then. That's fine. Alright, so the trick here is we need to get them all in a group. Oh, he is a tough one. Alright, so to deal with him, we're going to have to... Uh... We're just going to have to keep... Uh, stunning him. And to stun him, all we gotta do is hit him with a single blast. Okay, uh, alright, so I'm not able to dodge his attacks, apparently. <sighs> alright. So I think what I'm going to try to do is rush him and see if we can't get this flashbang right in his dumb face. Whoop. There. God. There. Suck shit. Oh. He's a lot easier to deal with. There's a cop car nearby. Get away from me. Give me a goddamn gun. All right. Whoop. There. Screw it. Oh, God damn it. Okay. This is bad just because it's, uh, they're going to keep spawning. All right, well, hey, you know, I killed them. least this section because they took away the gun. Now for some sexy music. It's a 
Night Owl, the voice of Pat Main, all night, every day. So that's our buddy Pat Main. Or oh, we are, we are at the radio station. That's right. There he is. Here's a little surprise. The famous writer Alan Wake just walked in, folks. I'm gonna see if I can talk him into an interview. Come on in, Mr. Wake. Oh, I'm so glad you could find the time to do this, Mr. Wake. Nowhere to run now, Dan Brown. You back away from me. Don't hurt. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Everyone calm down. Put the gun down. We're all friends here, right? Cool your jets, Nightingale. We got him. What the hell's the matter with you? There's a civilian in there. But I'm not I racist. So many cliffs, it was ridiculous. That's what you get for naming a book the sudden stop. It was probably good I hadn't had the chance to tell Maine where I was going. I'd have to lose the cops and find my own way to the mine. Nightingale stared through the broken studio window into the dark woods. He turned around, started to walk out, but Maine grabbed his arm. Young man, you almost shot me. You don't shoot off rounds at people like that. What's the matter with you? Nightingale shook his arm free, marched out. His cheeks burned with rage and humiliation. I'll get you, Gadget, next time. <laughs> so we got some flares and we got some flashbangs. Shit, here they come. Got a generator. Let's see if we can. Oh, no! Okay, here we go. There it is. Now we've got some goddamn uh, defense. Okay. All right, so being out outside right now means we're going to be dealing with the darkness since it's pretty prevalent here. up here it seems the darkness has kind of abandoned this spot I'm gonna let Alan get his his uh, wind back generator QTA can be a bit uh, troubling even though that's that's um, the hit space is huge did I come from here I couldn't have come from here that was a different area. What's up here? Is anything up here? I mean, this is a long way back up. I feel like maybe I came from here? Look at that skybox, though. Glorious. Uh, invisible stamina meters are just the worst. And here's the radio tower. I don't think we're at the radio tower, though. So maybe I accidentally stumbled upon a new section. Alright, here's the radio tower. And we've got some goodies. Some flares and manuscript. Danny had stepped out. But what stumbled back in was something else. Something alien. A monster. Walter tried to kill it. First with his fists, then a chair. It wouldn't die. Instead, it kept coming, unaffected by the beating it had taken. After Walter managed to kick it down the cellar stairs, fear took over. He ran, 
got behind the wheel, gunned the engine. The booze wouldn't make him forget, but he knew he had to try. Okay, so it was worth coming up here. We got ourselves another page. And we got a couple of flares. Flares are good. They'll give us a temporary relief while we uh, try to deal with them. Now, flashbangs will kill almost all of them instantaneously. Flares will just make them vulnerable to gun. Oh. I don't know if you saw that. If you look very carefully off to the... It's very hard to see it. But if you look just where that plant is to my left... You can see a little light uh, shining through it. Yeah, that's some that's some wicked render there. Woo! That's a smaller thing than some of the stuff we've seen before. Or before. Oh shit! Ah, damn it! Okay, so crow, the crows are, honest to God, worst. I can't stand them as an enemy. Or are they ravens? I think, they're, I think they'd be ravens, because that's more in line with the writing motif that this game is running. Whatever they are, they suck. Oh, I got the page. Yeah, we got the page. So, like, some of the pages... All right, this isn't super hard. But... I thought there was a grouping behind me, but... So, like, one of the things is, is these are the next pages we need to get, and they're on the main path, and then, like, there's these random pages that are, like... I don't know, I don't know why they, they did them in that order, like, they didn't do them in order, is the weird problem. So you see me pick up some from, like, later on down the list, and then you'll see me, like, pick it back up from the top of the list down. It's goofy. Very, very goofy. Alright, so now we should be back, yep, yeah, we're back in the darkness. Hear them. All right. So now let's head back to the uh, the correct path. Was that sound like an enemy but I didn't see anybody there was no sensible reason for the power company work lights to be here it was almost as if they'd been left for someone like me to use almost also hey brain buster how you doing appreciate you being here hope you're having a great day yeah flashbang So yeah, these are more traps. And we hit a checkpoint. Ah, yes. Give me that shotgun. Oh, hey, how you doing? Come on, I dodged that. I, I, I don't think. I hope that answers your question.
All right, so they're going to be kind of a dick to me about this, so here's what I'm going to try to do. I, I know what you're going for there. All right, so let's see if doing that. All right. There you are. Whew. Whoa! Ah! Okay. So that wasn't a very clean encounter, but... We did it. There's something shining up here. That's another manuscript page. The bulldozer's engine roared to life. Mud and rocks flew as it fought for traction. It crashed through the concrete wall and landed heavily in the yard. If it were an animal, it would have shaken its head after the impact, fixed its eyes on me, and charged. Of course, it had no head, nor eyes. Shadows crawled on its form, twisting it into a monster. Then, it came for me. I mean, doesn't it then technically have eyes, though? Come on, Alan. Plot holes. Shit. All right, so it looks like this area around this cabin is sort of a safe zone from the darkness fog. At least temporarily. Uh, no, Alan. It's it's a branch. It's it's a branch, Alan. You can do this. Okay. All right. Well, not much I can do. Other than make the journey. Oh, yeah. Thermos. Yeah, give me a coffee, Thermos. It's another page. Here we go. Sarah trusted her gut, and her gut said Agent Nightingale was an asshole. He felt wrong, and it wasn't just the smell of stale booze. It was in the way he flashed his badge, pulled rank, the look in his eyes when he wanted answers. Where was Alan Wake? What was this about an accident? Where was his wife? And most importantly, why did she let Wake go? He wouldn't answer her questions. Federal business was all he'd say. I mean, we all knew Nightingale was an asshole the first time we, uh, we first time we heard him speak. We're going to stock up on uh, munitions here. You got Alan Wake. Hello? He's the most stubborn man I've ever met. Alice? Alice? Alan. Alan. I'm so afraid. It keeps me in the dark. Please help me. I look at you, Alan, and it's not you. Something else. Looking out from behind your eyes. Alice, I'm here. I'm so alone here. It's all gonna go to hell. You need to be careful. Cooperate. The connection had been terrible, but that wasn't the only thing that hadn't been right with the call. 
She sounded wrong somehow, but she had called me. In my restless dreams, I see that town. Right falls. The pipe wrenched itself loose from the bridge's steel framework. Wrapped in darkness, it floated in midair, twitching. For a moment, I didn't understand what I was looking at. The heavy object lurched at me with impossible force. I threw myself out of the way, but just barely. When I turned my flashlight on it, it shook in a dark rage before it flew at me again. Good, we're gonna deal with poltergeists. I could see a railway bridge up ahead and a warehouse of some sort on the opposite shore. I hoped I could find a car from there. Oh, we found a cache back here. Gotta follow the signs. By signs, I mean just yellow paint. Hey, okay. Directing me into here. Oh, yeah. Look at all this. Look at all this ammo. Okay, well, maybe not all the ammo, but plenty of ammo. All right, so we're maxed out. More shotgun ammo. We got flares, batteries. All right. Pretty good uh, cash. Any collectibles? I haven't seen another thermos. Whoop! Whoop! Oh, I dodged that. This will top off. All right, let's get the hell out of here because uh, this is clearly not safe. Oh, yeah. I mean, after all the Ubisoft games, like, collectibles have just been rendered pointless. I feel like they're okay in this one. Like, there's radio programs, TV programs. You can find thermoses. You can find pieces of the manuscript. Like, I feel like the at least the, co the collectibles in this match the theme. And you don't need to collect them. Like, there's... I don't think there's any reward for collecting everything. Other than just, like, the lore and the fact that you did it. Excuse me. The darkness that was pursuing me was growing stronger, and it was taking over everything in its path. Bridges are terrifying enough as it is, but uh, it's like extra not okay. I'm not super keen on this one. Okay, so we're gonna go. Th we're gonna go this route. We're gonna use flares because flashbangs apparently are not very helpful here. Great how everything in this has really fucked up the physics. The that was pursuing me was growing stronger, and it was taking over everything in its path. You 
dick. Ah. Ultra dick. Here. Enjoy the flare. I think we got it. Not entirely because the uh, miasma is still around. Okay. Ah! Fucking rude. Yeah. Luckily, the poltergeists are uh, really bad aims. I don't know where they went. They seem to have flung themselves out of my uh, out of the area, so they're not active anymore. Maybe. Go to manuscript page. I slammed the door shut right in his smug face. He pleaded for me to open the door. True to form, the asshole actually thought I would obey. I had no sympathy left. No guilt either. Not for him. I took a moment to savor the scream. I bet I had a smile on my face. It was all that I had time for. The dark presence was inside the lodge with me. Very true, Tyrion. Very true. As couldn't, a teenager, couldn't have put it better just myself. I started to get interested in writing. Stephen King had been a source of inspiration to me. I thought about all the inanimate objects that had come to life in his books. No one is safe in a good horror story. Certainly not the protagonist. That's what makes them fun. This was anything but. The darkness could possess anything. And it was getting closer. And now we've got a more powerful flashlight. We have upgraded our flashlight, folks. This this here, this is a fucking mag light. This isn't your 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 kitty's uh flashlight. Mm. Definitely not a boss arena. kind of goodies do we have here? Batteries, shotgun ammo, and excuse me. And uh, we've got some excess uh, ammo for when we want to fire our pistol. What do we got here? We got a flare. Good, good. That'll come in handy if we need to uh, vulnerable eyes. That is a word. Shut up. Alan's, I guess, the only fan of Maximum Overdrive. Oh, I found another thermos. Alright, let's press this button. Oh, okay. They seem a little pissed off. Oh, shit. I think I did a good job here. I don't know. Whoop. What was that? Well, we hit a checkpoint. Oh. Like the, you can almost tell which ones are the more powerful ones because they're just they're more hulking, they're bigger, and they they have this presence about them versus like these smaller ones. In light, you can hurt them. Yes, I know. I could probably run back and top off my ammo.
I don't think headshots actually are a thing here. I don't think it's a gameplay mechanic, actually. Flares. Okay, some more revolver ammo. Batteries, which we're fine on right now. It's time for some uh, more... What was this? It was uh, Night Springs. We take the facts of our existence for granted, unaware that they are merely a thin veneer of desperate self-delusion, covering a vast cosmos of madness and horror. All too often, the stars are right in Night Springs. Tonight's episode, A Family Occasion. Journalist Alvin Durlis' trip to study the local customs of an insular community in Night Springs has been less than successful. Until tonight. Well, I'm glad you changed your minds about this. Ancient customs, local mythology. My editor loves this kind of stuff. Well, Mr. Durlis, we don't want to feel like we're on exhibition. But you have demonstrated the seriousness of your intent. Oh, I am serious. Really, just do your thing. I'll stay out of your way and observe. Actually, I thought you could assist us. I'm afraid we are a man short. It would provide you with an intimate perspective. Did I really? Of course, Mr. Durlin. Well, I guess that's the least I... What would I have to do? Oh, here. Let me show you with a kiss. I, uh, I... <laughs> is the poor man's uh, Twilight Zone in that like it completely missed the point of the Twilight Zone the darkness surged towards me sucking everything loose from the ground into its depths tugging at my clothes I saw the flare the kidnapper had dropped and threw myself towards it just as I felt my feet leave the ground the darkness embraced me with the force of a tornado Somehow I managed to light the flare. The darkness roared and cast me away. I fell toward the dark waters of the lake far below. Like, none of it's got any real morals. It's just kind of like, yeah, what if we throw in, like... And they're, like, really quick. They're, like, two to three minute long segments. So, like... What, what can you really do in that time? There's our good friend. Oh. All right. So how do we... Oh, hey. I'm trying to remember how I deal with this. There we go. I feel like the cocaine was really the, st the star. What do you think, Alessa? Alessa agrees. 
All right, so flashbang is an instant kill, it seems. Or at least because I got it underneath it. I mean, it's got, it's definitely got elements of maximum overdrive. Like, this game is basically inspired by everything. Uh, HP Lovecraft, King. Like, it's, it's, it's copying heavily from a bunch of different, uh, horror authors. Can't go any higher than this, so we're gonna have to keep moving this way. funny how much easier easy is than like normal because by now i'd probably be like at like two batteries and no ammo because to be quite honest the difficulties on this were not balanced well well that's just because stephen king was coked out of his goddamn mind when making maximum overdrive Normally, King is very, like, uptight about his stuff, but with Maximum Overdrive, this is about a time where, like, he was making so much freaking money, he didn't have to care, and so they just, like, coked up and made the movie. I had never been this glad to see the sunrise. I had a couple of hours to get to the coal mine. Like... The coal mine wasn't far now. Today, I would meet the kidnapper, and he would give me Alice. I wouldn't give him any other choice. A drowning man will clutch at a straw. But, um... To put it in perspective, uh, they did so much cocaine making Maximum Overdrive that they probably could have killed David Lee Roth. Little by little, without realizing it, I'd come to believe that the story in the manuscript was coming true. The current of its narrative had taken me deeper and deeper into dark waters. Alice had been taken from me. Barry was probably in jail. I was a fugitive from the FBI. The whole world taken over by the Dark Presence was trying to destroy me. It all felt real. But it matched a textbook case of insanity. I'm just checking out this area. Well, the game definitely, uh, like, rushes through the time. Anything interesting here? No goodies. It would be super dickish if they actually hit, like, goodies and stuff along the, uh, back ways. I saw a better vehicle over here. Also, he runs out of stamina way too goddamn fast. It's very obnoxious. But we're going to take this vehicle instead, because this is nicer. Oh, wow! That is faster! Oh. Okay. Uh, camera, what are you doing? Stop that. All right. All right. Well, I don't know if I was supposed to do it that particular way, but I still did it. So, bite me. All right. So, what's over here? They do a good job of letting you know where the edge is, because they just literally have cliff sides. To just kind of, like, indicate, you know, this this is as far as you're going, friend. It's a very dark place, Bright Falls. It was ironically named, because the sun stays up for only two hours. I mean, they gotta force you into the darkness all the time, because otherwise, you know, how do you justify the uh, shadow people? Alright, let's head up here, because there's probably a thermos or something up here. Maybe some ammo. Also, I can't believe that she totally 
uh, dunked on our tweed jacket. This is a sweet, sweet ass tweed jacket. Well, yeah, before we go into the mine, we need to make sure we've got a. Oh, okay. Alright, so the game did want me to come up here, I guess. More Pat. This is Pat Main, and you're listening to KBF FM. Folks, I want to apologize for kind of abandoning you to that looping music track last night, but I was detained. You see, I encountered a big shot G Man with an itchy trigger finger who could use a, a lesson in manners and a boot in the ass. Not necessarily in that order either. Now, folks, I know I'm not being very informative here, and I apologize for that. I really should just keep quiet, but. I'm just so peeved right now, because some people just shouldn't be carrying badges. And I'm just glad that our Sheriff Breaker was there to straighten things out. And if someone I met last night is listening, let me just say, I'm sorry if my mouth got you in trouble. I'm pretty sure you're not the bad guy here. Godspeed, son. I hope you know what you're doing. Now, on a lighter note, I'll be talking to Dr. Nelson all morning. But first, a little music. Aw, oh, see, Pat's thinking about us. He knows. He understands. Pat's the good guy. Alright. To the coal mine we go. Good guy, Pat. Holy shit, the camera. Why? Suck that, Bright Falls. I don't care about your signs. I don't care about your your guardrails either. I mean, it's not hard to side with Alan when the other side's a cop. I mean, on that merit alone. Okay, that's another watchtower. Camera's just having a day. Oh, yeah, like, FBI agent was just, just cop on cop. And not in the sexy way. I hear a radio. Maybe it's time for some more Pat. Yes, yeah, more Pat time. Before we check in on Pat, let's, uh... Okay, I don't see any more uh, collectibles. So let's hear what Pat's got to say. Welcome back to KBF FM. Hope you enjoyed that, too. Now, Doc, you were talking about life and finding that special someone, that soulmate. Well, you were talking about that. I was saying I don't buy it. Well, see, to me, that's strange, because I always pegged you as a hopeless romantic. <laughs> you got me there, Pat. But I think love's where you look for it. And you need to do a lot of looking, sure. But the idea that there's that one special person out there for you, and if you miss that chance, it's gone forever and you're forever incomplete. I mean, isn't that depressing? Or heck, childish even? Hey, there's plenty of fish in the sea. <laughs> and apparently a fisherman has a fishing analogy for everything, but what you're saying, isn't that a little harsh? Well, no. What I am saying is that your potential for finding that connection isn't limited to what's essentially a chance encounter. How is that harsh? Yeah, well, I guess that's a nice thought, but let me say something personal here. Okay. Now, well, I, I don't disagree with you exactly, but I can't really fit that together with what I feel, what I, what I felt for someone, because she was the one. She was. And she, I let her drift away from me. Maybe I didn't put in the work. I don't know, but... Well, since then, and it, it was a long time ago, but, but since then, there hasn't been anyone, not like her. And I'm not saying I dwell on her or haven't moved on. I like my life. I, I'm not living in the past, but I do miss the way she completed me. You can't argue with the heart, Pat. Uh, I'm sorry, folks. I had kind of a scary experience last night, and let's just say it's shaken a few things loose. Ah, uh, we love you, Pat. Okay. So. We got a, uh, another radio encounter. Oh, have, have a good one, Tyrion. Thanks for popping in. Ooh. 
So we got a slicker ride. All right. How does this one drive? Let's drive it off the side. Instant death. So good. Let's make sure that... I, th I think it didn't... Like, doesn't stay. I wonder if these are the same. Yeah, they're the same. We're not going to listen to the whole thing. I'm just going to tag it and then we'll move on. Welcome back to KBF FM. Hope you enjoyed that too. Now, Doc, you were talking about life and finding that special someone. Huh. Soulmate. Well, you were talking about that. I was saying I don't buy it. Well, see, to, to me, that's strange because I always think you were right. I love that. The way that the uh, subtitles disappear as you get farther away. Like, that's always... Anytime a game does something like that, I've always enjoyed it. It's just a nice little effect. So there's a mill here. What will we find inside? Lots of garbage. What's up top? Anything? It did a good job with the, uh, the atmospheric sound effect. Come on, get up there. Keep it going, Alan. There you go. Ah, manuscript. For Mott, spying on the writer on the ferry had been a disappointment. His boss had made Wake Out to be something special, but Mott hadn't been impressed. He'd gotten a good long look up the wife, though, and he liked what he saw. Mott had fantasized about goading Wake into a fight, but it hadn't happened. Still, he'd get his chance to see if the writer had anything in him. He'd been promised as much. Sounds like we've got a fight on our hands. I assume falling from that height would kill me. What's going on here? That's weird texturing. All right. How much of this area can we explore? That's, I think, instant death still. I don't think we're allowed to go that way. Yeah, I think this is all instant death, because we're not supposed to go down that way. And then once we hit a certain point, it will open it up. Let's, let's see, where does it want me to go? I think it wants me to go down that road. Okay, so I will say the camera for driving is absolutely garbage. It's like the only time during the game where the camera's an absolute mess. Right, yeah, see, now, now we're lower. I was early. I was supposed to meet the kidnapper at noon in the main building. The coal mine was quiet. It was a museum now. While there were some early residents in the area, the true genesis of the town of Bright Falls came with the founding of the Bright Falls Mining Company and the opening of the Bright Falls Coal Mine in 1878. Although the work was hard and dangerous, many immigrants, Germans, Poles, Italians, Finns, and Swedes, among others, worked the mines. While lucrative at first, the mining steadily declined in the 20th century. The seams were rich but hard to get at, and the volcanic activity in the area made the mine shafts particularly dangerous. Alright, we hit our checkpoint, so we, we finally get to hold on to all of our junk we've, we picked up to this point. I see a page. Great Falls Coal Mine Museum sign. There's a page. Okay, so we missed a page because we're not playing on the Nightmare difficulty. With Nightingale gone and the night wind blowing in through the broken studio window, Maine stared at Sarah. The sheriff looked away. Maine's voice shook with barely controlled anger. That boy's doing more drinking than thinking. I hope you know what you're doing, Sarah. 
He's got a sickness in his eyes. You take my word for it. He wants Wake for a reason, and it's not for anything good. Yeah, we're definitely not going into the coal mine. That would be terrible. That would that would be dangerous and stupid and serve no benefit whatsoever for us to go into the coal mine. So I'm super glad that we are definitely not going into the coal mine. It's not going to happen. Ooh, another placard. Let's learn more. In 1970, a volcanic eruption below Cauldron Lake, while relatively minor, caused most of the deep mining tunnels to collapse or flood. 32 miners lost their lives in the calamity, and all mining around Bright Falls came to a final stop. Now, many of the remaining buildings are protected at historical landmark. I would never deprive you all of deep mining lore. That was a sweet transition. I didn't want to go outside. Cops had to be looking for me. The noon sun turned the place into a sauna. The day dragged on. Different scenarios ran through my mind. Ways of how I'd torture the kidnapper to get Alice back. Or the different horrible things he could have done to her. I imagined her dead. I had no way of knowing she was still alive. It was killing me. I was running on blind hope. It was all a waste of time. The bastard never showed up. Now it's nighttime. Wake, where the hell are you? Change of plan. You know where Mirror Peak is? It's a big mountain north of where you are. You follow the path from the mine, you can't miss it. There's a lookout point there. I'll be waiting. I'm through being jerked around you by you. You want to see your wife alive? Because if you do, you better watch what you say to me. Do we understand each other? I want to talk to Alice. Yeah, and I want the manuscript. Don't keep me waiting, Wake. Hello? Hello! Ah! I'm gonna kill him! I wonder if I could I had write to get down. to Mirror Peak. Ah! I very much close. didn't like that. Maybe closer than ever before. I didn't like that at all. I, I, I would like that to not happen again. Please, and thank you. Oh, it looks like our most of our stuff carried over. Holy crap, we've got 12 flares now. Sweet. Uh, shotgun Amy. All right, we've got uh, 20 rounds. And we've got, I'm guessing that's six, so 48 rounds in our, our uh, revolver. We're going to boink that. I aim to please all folk, and if mining lore is what y'all want, mining lore is what y'all gonna get. But I, like, it's just the way that pallet flew. But like, pallets don't work that way. None of this works this way. Down we go. Oh, oh shit. The miasma's coming. When Thomas Zane fell for Barbara Jagger, it happened fast. She was young, vibrant and beautiful, full of life. He had never been a very happy man, and without any seeming effort, she had changed all that. Zane felt good for the first time in his life. Everything she did was another piece of a jigsaw puzzle he hadn't even known he'd been missing. And best of all, she made the words flow, strong and sharp. She was his muse. Alright, Miasma's here, which means it's more darkness time. The Taken are here. Oh, it's a boss fight. Alright. So yeah, definitely uh, headshots are not headshots are not a mechanic.
I'm not fond of the poltergeist enemy. So, poltergeist enemy and uh, what did I say the other one was? I think it was just the poltergeist enemy sucks. Oh, and crows. Or ravens or whatever the fuck they are. They suck. Alright, so flashbangs. Been missing out on those. Nice to have some more back. Hey, fellas. So the really small and fast ones go down in one hit, and they're pretty easy to, uh... They're pretty easy to make vulnerable with the flashlight. Seems angry. Not quite sure what's in there, but... I don't think it can get out yet. So I'm just checking. Okay, there's nothing back here. It's not very threatening when it's boxed up like that. Inside. What the hell? The dark tornado. Okay. Dark presence can be also become a tornado. The only way to reach the hillside ahead was to go through the building. I had to find a way to avoid electrocution. Which of course means we're going to be dealing with a bunch of Taken. Think that's a page? Nope, that's just a... bit of metal. Oh, there they are. enough for jazz so one thing about switching between items is it doesn't switch items right away so if you have uh, say the flashbangs equipped and you try to switch to the flares you have to wait for him to actually go through the animation of equipping the flares or you'll still throw a flashbang Now we got a flare gun, so that's gonna up our chances a bit more. Okay, power's off. But that also means the miasma is coming in. Which means more nerds. Oh, or more poltergeist. See any taken yet? 
Ah, okay. There they are. Yeah, we're deep in the miasma right now. So they're all popping out. Oh shit. Let's get out of here. Okay. We gotta get out of here. Alrighty. There we go. Whoop. Just gotta keep moving, keep moving. Whoa! We'll just tag this one out. There we go. I see shiny. Okay, so the dodging the dodging is fidgety is the problem. So we're gonna we're gonna flash our way out of here. I'm gonna avoid that door for a moment. See if we can't collect. And, uh, it's like that's all I can get here. And these are just like cans. I thought that was like an explosive, and I was very wrong about that. Suck shit, loser. But I hear feedies. I hear feedies. I figured that would be like the fastest way to just deal with that particular section. So we can't head up. Oh. That was not my best moment. Trust no one in the dark. I want to know who's running around town with invisible ink and just writing shit everywhere. Ah. Ladder. Hey, Thermos. Come here, Thermos. Another manuscript page. Some of the Taken retained echoes of their former selves, but these were just the nerve twitches of a dead thing. Nothing remained but a shell covered and filled with darkness. In most cases, these puppets were enough for the purposes of the dark presence. But for anything more elaborate, as with the writer, it was different. It needed his mind. And so rather than taking him over completely, it merely touched him.
very lewd. And bam, that's it. We can't go back. Uh, I'm sorry. Oh, shit! Very good haunted house effect there. So what do we got in here? We got ammo, so we're now topped off. Fine on batteries. Let's uh, pop this bad boy open. And get that gate open. Naturally, something's... Shit's about to go down. Seems like a very bright night. Where's the moon? Yeah, I don't see the moon. But it's apparently a very bright night. Even though there's, like, no lights around. There was no way the flashbang grenades were standard power company equipment. What's back here? Anything good? Anything neat? No. No, nothing at all. So we're just going to head on our path. Get rid of these little tumors. So I think we take damage if we touch them. Let's get rid of them, because I know they become a hassle later on. Doesn't seem like there's anything of value in there. Oh, okay. All right, so it's it's uh, six shots per clip. Out of here. So those guys we want to be using the shotgun for, because otherwise we're just wasting tons of uh, pistol rounds on them, or revolver rounds, or whatever. Whatever. Revolver's a type of pistol. Shut up. Into the fog. Oh, okay, there was a bush. I thought there was an enemy. It making me paranoid. I will say, I don't find Alan Wake a scary game. I find it an effective, uh, like horror thriller kind of game. But it doesn't, it doesn't scare me like uh, Fatal Frame did. I stared through the bars of the jail cell. Barry stood behind me, swaying on his feet, looking as ill as I felt. Agent Nightingale stood on the other side of the bars with Sheriff Breaker. Nightingale had a stack of manuscript pages in his hand. He seemed unhinged as he gloated. Well, I've got you now, Raymond Chandler. It's all here. All the evidence, including conspiracy to murder a federal agent. Alright, so it wants me to go that way. And that way is the real only way we can go, so let's keep moving. All right, so it wants, it wants me to go that way, so we would definitely go this way, because there's a cache up here. It says to keep going this way. We got some more paint. Shit. 
Yeah, that's right. Fuck off. I want none of them birds. Here's our cash. What do we got? Some flashbangs. Good, good. Flashbangs are a... Oh. Um, hi, everybody. See? Yeah, it was a waste of ammo. I didn't realize that was a... a a burly at first. So it can't, it doesn't necessarily kill everybody. For some enemies, it just uh, makes them, um, it drops their vulnerability. Hey! Give me that thermos. Ha! You thought you could deny me the thermos. But I will sip its delicious goodness. We will sup at the thermos. Our thermos runneth over. Yeah, I'm having like no problem with lithium batteries. I had no real plan. I was going to give the kidnapper all the manuscript pages I had for Alice. If that wasn't enough, I'd hold him at gunpoint and make him talk. Switch to pump action. Oh, good God, yes. That is, this is the this is the ticket right here. Look at how much ammo we've got. Go away, birds. All right, Miasma is starting again. Hello. Nailed it. That was a good catch. Oh, here it comes. Okay, there's a building back here. There's usually stuff inside. Thermos. All right. Oh, crap. Suck shit, nerds. Seem like there's any more ammo inside. Huh. There we go. We got a thermos. We need a uh, handgun ammo, quick. Oh. Oh, he is being an asshole. Oh, come on. I didn't have a chance to react. I had no real plan. I was going to give the kidnapper all the manuscript pages I had for Alice. If that wasn't enough, I'd hold him at gunpoint and make him talk. Raggle frag. All right, well, there's something back... Oh, no. It wants me to go that way. 
So it looks like both of these paths lead up that way. Gotta run back for that thermos. ourselves a nice thermos, flare gun ammo, oh shit, I hear him behind me. back here, then this huge group appears. There we go. So what were they protecting? Looks like the entrance. Ah, there we go. That's the good shit. Checkpoint. So I'm curious then, if we go back down and we try going the other way, what does what's down there? Because clearly it's saying that that's the correct way. Oh, okay. So it just... It circles back around. Ah! One of the minor problems is you run slower than everything else. waste more ammo. It sounds angry. The presence was moving ahead of me in the same direction I was going. A cold feeling settled itself in the pit of my stomach. Was it going for Alice? There are, like, makeshift graves here. Gross. Kind of creepy. It's a really fucked up, uh, mine. The graveyard shift may cause cancer.
Oh, I find you very annoying. Yeah. You suck. I don't like you. Alright, we gotta switch the shotgun because uh, we're running low. Unless this game wants to toss some more handgun ammo at me. No, it wants to give me batteries. I don't need goddamn batteries. I need handgun ammo. Give me bullets. So they may smite the darkness. You stay still. Don't you don't you get possessed. The place was dead. A ghost town. Had been for decades, maybe a century. I knew ever What? I'm sorry? Trying to throw cars at me now. Very rude. Things were never as simple in real life as in fiction. I had lost count of the times I had wished there'd be a clear reason for my writer's block. Something to fight. Something to lash out on. There wasn't. I was filled with doubt. I was nothing like the hero in my books. Alex Casey had gone through his life with single-minded determination never wavering from his goal. Even now, I was angry at myself, angry at Alice, angry at Barry. I was fumbling and I had no plan. Gray Peak Gorge, originally founded in 1928, the Gray Peak Gorge mining town was one of the permanent settlements of the Bright Falls Mining Company built for its workers. The nearby graveyard is a testament to the dangers the miners faced on a daily basis. Most of the men who lost their lives over the years here were buried there, a grim reminder to be careful for those who remained. Gray Peak Gorge was abandoned almost overnight when the Bright Falls Mining Company closed its doors in 1970. I, I mean, it's so, like, corporate America. Like, we're going to found this company, and we're going to bury all the people who die working at this company nearby as a warning to all the other motherfuckers working at this company to, you know, work better. God, that's peak corporate. Hey, another thermos. I wonder what's in these thermoses. I know it says coffee thermos, but you could put anything in a coffee thermos. You could put coffee, you could put, you know, liqueur, you you could put some clam chowder in there. Just get some nice uh, chowder. You know, on a cold day, you just, you know, spin that top off and suck down some delicious chowder, you know? Some hot cocoa, maybe. A bisque. You could put some bisque in there. Not crab bisque, though. Uh, uh, tomato bisque. Tomato, tomato and herbs. Awesome. I mean, they programmed this goddamn thing in and they are gonna fucking use it. All right, what's next? The rest of it. Luckily, I have terrain to uh, protect me, kind of. Except. Yeah. Go. Alright. And down it goes. Alright, Poltergeist has been defeated again.
Bye bye. Still no uh, pistol ammo. We're hurting for ammo. Uh, all right, that didn't help. That's the ticket. So for these, it looks like you need to combine... Uh, power sources. So this one doesn't seem to go up high. There we go. So now we just do that and that. And down it goes. It's a tough one. We got a key. There's a mining shaft. It's hey, Thermos! That one is a lemongrass potato soup. More flare gun ammo. We haven't used any yet. Oh. Side of riding is a struggle. I feel ill. I managed to make my way downstairs. There's a shoebox filled with books and papers by Thomas Zane. It's very hard to focus, but I managed to read some of it. He's a poet, and a good one. He writes of muses and creators summoning fabulous things from a magic lake, using his powers to shape the world of a realm of gods and dreams and demons, dark things that wait for a chance to slip through, wearing the flesh of men as disguise. Zane writes about himself, his girlfriend being taken over by a dark presence, about growing scared of the lake. Zane believes it's a mirror to the gaping void of darkness above, where some Lovecraftian presence lurks. I crawl back upstairs. I'll borrow these things for my story. They ring true. They fit. It's interesting the way that they deliver pieces of uh, the plot. All right, do I switch to hunting rifle or do I stick with shotgun? Let's see how much ammo they have. Yeah. I feel like shotgun is going to be the better choice here. We've got more ammo for it. There's something down there and it isn't happy. And uh, we will find out what it is next time, because that is where we're going to call it. Thank you so much for coming by and watching. Of course, I'll see you on the next one. Later.